Hi, and welcome to this second video on CSV Kit. In this video, I'm going to talk about the second command that CSV Kit has, namely CSV look. So first of all, when you're learning about a new command in CSV Kit, a great idea is just to take the name, so CSV look in this case, and go to the help page. And here, let me scroll up. So here you can see the usage of the command. The goal of this command, as they stated, is to render a CSV file in the console as a Markdown compatible fixed width table. So said more easily, this is a way of making CSV files look nice in the console so that you can actually read them. So here are the optional arguments. I'll use two of them later on, but in the beginning, let's just use the default behavior of this command. So. Let's go here and clear the screen. Now I have my CSV look command. And what I will do, if you recall from last video, I still have now this Excel file that we downloaded and also have the CSV version. So just to see it in the usual terminal form, if I use the cat command, and here I can definitely see it, but honestly, it looks quite horrible to read. It's very hard to understand where a column begins and where it ends. So what you can do is to use CSV look on the file. And here, to just a default behavior, it looks almost worse, right? I mean, look at this. The main problem here is that the CSV file has too many columns. And that makes it very difficult to read in any case when you're using the command line. So what you can do is use the CSV look and then use the optional command max columns, I think. Set this to, let's say, four of them. And again, pass in the file and run this. This looks a lot better. You can see here that you get this fixed width for each of them so that you get this nice alignment of these tabs here so that this is a lot easier to read. So by passing in this optional argument called max columns, you can see I got one, two, three, four columns and then just essentially truncated for a rest. So this here is a great way of looking at CSV files. You can still see that I got quite a lot of rows. I got all of them. What you can also do is to specify the number of rows you want. So let me just go back to the command. In addition to max columns, we also have max rows. Maybe take a bit more than four, so let's say 20 and run this. And now you can see it's truncated also here. In a big file, it's an advantage to just get the beginning because then you get the headers here. So you can actually see what each of them means. So here's the state, country, and so on. So as we saw in the last video, if you want to save this here that I've displayed to a file, you can redirect it with a greater than symbol here to, for instance, data2.csv. I won't really do that, but this is something you can do. What I will do instead is to show you how to parse some more of these rows. I mean, here you have 20. If you want some more, you can do, say, 40. Now you need to scroll a bit. A more efficient way if you want to parse them is to remove this optional argument here, and then take the output for this and essentially pipe that into a command called less. If you're not used to using the pipe symbol here in the command line, this essentially tells you to take the output of the command on the left and send it to the program here on the right. And less is a built-in command program that essentially lets you parse a file. So if I run this, I get all of the rows, but now you can see I can move down, I can move up with like up and down arrows. I can also press the space bar to jump down, I guess, a full screen width. This is really easy for parsing it. Now you're essentially inside this less program. If you want to exit this program, you can press Q. This is for me a great way of parsing the data. You shouldn't underestimate the power of piping things. Say here yeah, that you didn't really remember this max row optional argument. What you can then just do is, for instance, if you want just the first couple of rows, you can just pipe this into the head command. And here you have it. Essentially, the more you play around with a command line, the more you learn that there are so many ways of doing the same thing. It's generally good to have a few different ways of doing the same thing. Finally, for this CSV look command, one thing you can do with it is essentially take in the file as we've done here, but also the CSV look command can accept the file through this piping operation. So let's see how to do this. So say now that instead of this data.csv, let me just remove that file. So if you look at our file storage here, we have only the Excel file. So say that now that I'm restarting from this point and I want to get a look at the file, what I can do is first use into CSV as a repetition from last time from this file, then pipe this into CSV look, and maybe I'll add max columns equals six. And then again, let's pipe this into less. And here I have it, now I can parse it. It looks maybe slightly strange and the reason is because six is exactly overflowing here in my terminal. It would probably be fine for you. I'm just using a quite a big font size so that you can see things, but maybe let's take it down to five to see how this works. 
Still barely over the limit. Let's do four. Ah, that's a lot better. So now you can parse the file quite easily and you can exit it again with Q as you can do in this less program. Notice that if I check out my file storage, I haven't made any new files. So this is just a really convenient, quick way of using two of these CSV kit commands for just taking a look at the file. And this is also kind of a foreshadowing in the sense that one of the true powers of this CSV kit is being able to use many of these commands at the same time, essentially piping the result from one of them into another. Then you can create these rather complex pipelines that essentially does everything you need to do with CSV files really quickly and really easily for you. So that's it for this video. Now we have two CSV kit commands into CSV and CSV look that you know. I hope you're excited about learning more of them and I'll see you again in the next video for another command.